Hi everybody, it's Kay and this is a Feature 5 video, Romance and Contemporary Edition. I have five authors that I want to spotlight for you, authors that people aren't talking about on BookTube right now. I am also going to share with you the number of books they have on Goodreads, the average ratings they have, and do a little bit of the synopses of each of these books. So the first author is Anita Richmond Bunkley. Some of her books, um, she's just listed as Anita Bunkley, as you'll see in just a second. So this first book is Balancing Act. Uh, which way? Yeah, Balancing Act. And the second one is Relative Interest. Now, Anita has 10 works listed on Goodreads. Average rating of 4.02, 4 196 ratings or reviews, mainstream romance. This particular book, Relative Interest, is about um, a young woman named Kira Forster who has already lost her parents and her, her twin sister to untimely deaths. She comes back from Africa to reach out to her six-year-old niece, Vicky. She really wants to see Vicky and be a part of her life. But when she gets back, she finds out that her niece has been abandoned by her deadbeat dad and little Vicky is in foster care. But when something happens with her foster care parents, she, Kira finds out that a white mayoral, mayoral candidate and his wife have announced plans to adopt Vicky. And so Kira is doing what she can to fight to be a part of Vicky's life. She finds support from a most unlikely source and discovers that beyond the issues of race and biology lies a heartbreaking, long-hidden secret. So that is Relative Interest, and the author again is Anita Bunkley or Anita Richmond Bunkley. Next, we have Felicia Mason, and this book is called... Foolish so, Heart. Um, about this book, there's a CEO. His name is Coleman Hart III. He's all business. Um, treacherous family infighting and ruthless opposition had put um, his family's company on the edge of bankruptcy. Now he has to gamble everything to save it. And the only person he could trust, business consultant Sandra Pride, um, whose ideas and passionate faith in him were lowering his defenses, and whose secrets would threaten dreams he'd never believe possible. Okay? So he's depending on this woman to help him save his family's business. Sandra had plenty of re reasons to ruin the Hart family. She thought that by helping Coleman, it would be a good way for her to make them pay. So it sounds like a little revenge going on here. But after she starts working with him, she finds that he's a man driven by ethics and honor, as well as a genuine caring that fires her deepest hungers. So now to save his company, she has to put her past and her heart behind her um, and <laughs> risk a love that promises them both forever. So yeah. Anyway, Felicia Mason on Goodreads, she has um, 38 works, an average rating of 4.18 over 2,400 ratings, and of course, this is romance. Next, we have Sandra Kitt, and this book is called Family Affairs. Sandra has 40 works on Goodreads, average rating of 3.93 of over 3,100 ratings, and she writes contemporary romance. Gail Patton owned a gallery in New York. She had a beautiful daughter and a man who was willing to help raise her her life was under control. But then David Kinney showed up. It had been so long since she'd seen him. Her mother had taken him under her wing to shield him from the life of the street. Back then, Gayla had nothing but contempt for him. He was a troublemaker, one foot inside jail, and who understood nothing about her dreams. But what bothered her the most about David was the way he could look into her eyes and see her secrets her insecurities, and her desires. Now, as a controversial new artist trying to make a name for himself, David has, has arrived in Gayla's world and turned that world and her heart upside down. So that is Family Affairs by Sandra Kitt. Okay. Next is Yolanda Jo. And I have two of her books, He Say, She Say, and This Just In. 
Yolanda has nine works on Goodreads, 3.71 average rating, 484 reviews, and she writes contemporary fiction. And I'm going to add a little bit of romance in there too. He say, she say, looks at love from both sides, male and female, from the boardrooms and condos of Chicago's Gold Coast to the city's trendiest clubs and hair salons. Here's a vibrant, straight-up story of love, sex, and friendship told from alternating points of view of four unforgettable characters. Sandy. Um, I admit it. I'm on the executive fast track, and I tend to fall into relationships just as quickly. But I want li lifelong love, and I don't think that's asking for the world. BB. Sandy's my ace buddy, and I do anything for her. Even if it means giving her reality checks. Me, I'm on a sex sabbatical. TJ, I'm not the world's most successful jazz musician, but I knew Sandy was a class act the minute I met her. I usually like to just have fun, but suppose Sandy turns out to be the real deal. Speed, I'm proud of my son TJ. He's smart, hardworking, smooth with the ladies, just like I taught him, but he doesn't know everything about me, and I'm hoping he never finds out. <laughs> so that is He Say, She Say by Yolanda Joe. Yep, so I already did her ratings. And then finally, we have Miss Eva Rutland, and this book is No Crystal Stair. I remember reading this book and just really, really loving this story. And I love the title especially because it's derived from Langston Hughes' poem. And I love, you know, I think about, you know, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair, you know. Uh, and I think this book is semi-autobiographical. Eva Rutland died several years ago, and I think she was 95 years old when she passed away. If I'm not mistaken, she was married to a Tuskegee Airman, I think. Um, she has 37 works on Goodreads, average rating of 3.58, 529 reviews, and she writes romance. Anne Elizabeth Carter grew up in the segregated Atlanta of the 1920s and 30s, part of the black privileged class, the much loved daughter of a doctor and the granddaughter of a slave. She was she was a charming, confident young woman with a well-planned life ahead of her. Then she upset all those plans when she fell in love. It was 1942, and Robert Metcalf was a member of the first black unit in the Army Air Corps stationed at Tuskegee, Alabama. Um, for the first time, she left her sheltered life in Atlanta to marry Bob. For the first time, she had to learn what it really meant to be a black woman in 20. 20th century America. During the decades that followed, Anne, Elizabeth, Anne Elizabeth's life and her marriage were shaped by the changes that shook the country that redefined it. During those decades, she learned the truth of a lifetime. You have to guard the love you find and overcome the hate that finds you. I like that. So that is Eva Rutland and this book is no crystal stare. Uh, okay, so to, that is my Feature 5 video for today, my romance or contemporary edition. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel to all the new subscribers. Thank you again so very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time, everybody. Keep reading. Bye-bye.